So remember how back in November, Avatar, The Way of the Water, was about to be released. And it was said that it needed to be the third or fourth highest grossing film of all time just to break even. Because it cost like, what, three something million, 2.5 million? No, no, not million, billion, sorry. Just to make. And (laughs) it had to become the third largest grossing film of all time in order to make profit. Well, as of this weekend, Avatar The Way of the Water has officially crossed $2.243 billion at the box office globally, meaning it has surpassed Titanic to become the third highest grossing film of all time. Disney shared a video celebrating the milestone that showcased fans from all over the world supporting Avatar The Way of the Water alongside the big moments that led to it becoming the third highest grossing film of all time. If James Cameron has taught me nothing this weekend, it is fuck the haters. (laughs) You had to look them in the eye and just be focused on what you're doing. Focus on your star player. Forget what everyone say. Forget the naysayers. You know what you got to do. So just put them 10 toes down and get it done. Shout out to James Cameron, man. Shout out to Disney. Shout out to Avatar. Yeah. That was a, that, that, this is a lesson right here. This is definitely a lesson to be learned, for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, blurds and nerds, freaks and geeks, this is Do You Speak Geek? D-Y-S-G Keep it real, that's key We the best OGs Dope topics, come see D-Y-S-G Keep it real, that's key We the best OGs Dope topics, come see I got a question, do you speak geek? Yeah. New episodes on the podcast dropping each uh-huh. week. Get hip to the game. I'm giving y'all a sneak peek. Yeah. Flavor for your ears. Bars flowing on unique beats. Sheesh. Blurs and nerds, freaks and geeks. The source wall wins. They dropping comics. You should cop. I think you don't appeal. Yeah. Don't, don't sleep on Dono and Nick. They preaching the gospel. Real ish, ill like mono. They sick. Right. Thumb life if you're into games with combos and kicks. This podcast is a gift. It's as real as it gets. Yeah. Blurs taking over. We're clever marketing. We gain exposure. Feeding the community magic. Your boy's a nerd promoter. The dialogue is Jimmy Crack. Corn, we aiming for gold. The truth was told. I can't speak for other platforms. Uh-huh. Sharpest cats out like knives, claws, and tack thorns. Yeah. We blacking out, going crazy like a black storm. DYSG, don't forget to follow back. Hosting on the airwaves, always keeping it a stack. Flowers to my haters, psych. I ain't giving y'all jack. Number one on the charts, give your boy a gold plaque. What's going on, folks? It's your boy Nick's back again with the podcast. Do you speak geek? Episode one forty five. Yo, shout out to my man Hyro for the vocals on the opening track. Shout out to Villainous on the beat. I love my theme song. It's quite dope. <laughs> it's quite amazing. Yo, uh, back again with y'all. Thank y'all for checking in, checking out with us, man. It's uh, been a hell of a ride getting here. Episode one forty five. Wow, we've got a lot of episodes in the can, man, a whole lot. But thanks to everyone who's been listening out there, to all of them, all the subscribers, all the followers, everyone who's been riding thus far. But if you are new here, welcome to Do You Speak Geek. This is the broadcast. We bring you all the lazy and grace inside the geek realm with news and reviews. Shout out to Spreaker. That's the home team. But wherever you get your podcast, look for Do You Speak Geek and please subscribe. And while you're doing that, please, please check us out on social media. Facebook at DYSGFB, Twitter at DYSG underscore tweets, Twitch at DYSG games, Instagram, TikTok at Do You Speak Geek. YouTube, the only place where you can find the Don and One Daddy show. Please be sure to like, subscribe, Hulk, smash that bell for all notifications and leave comments. We want to know what you guys think. Shout out to everybody who's been checking in with Dono. 
on the 28 Days of Black cosplay videos. He has been killing it all month. So shout out to my son, man. He's killing his, he's doing his thing. The heir to the throne of DYSG, if you will. All right, y'all. Um, short show. We not got a lot to talk about here, but we still got a pod to take care of, take care of business. So we're going to go ahead and do what we do about this time, people. Let's speak geek. Suit up. I want to be the very best. Talk nerdy to me. Are you ready? Okay, we got reviews coming at you at Rapid Fire. Cocaine Bear. It's a gory, hilarious, and totally fun as hell horror comedy that maximizes its inertly absurd premise while rarely overdosing on the joke. So that's actually a very good thing. Cocaine Bear is the one to see this this weekend, y'all. Please check that out. We Have a Ghost. It's on Netflix. It's a mostly bland movie elevated by a few good performances here and there and an intriguing premise that doesn't go as far as it seemed that it should go. But it's still pretty good, worth a check out. And finally, we have Blood Bowl 3. It's a rehash of a much better game. It's eh, it's kind of sloppy, eh, it's buggy in some points. It's yeah, that's a skip. This one, yeah, just don't worry about this one. <laughs> All right, y'all, let's hop into my favorite portion of the show. Y'all know the vibes, Source Wall. Man, you come right out of a comic book. Behold the Source Wall. Can you read, my son? Well, that depends. <laughs> There is nothing wrong with reading a story and looking at the pictures. Enough said, Stan. Let's hop right into it. The pull list this week, we have Action Comics 1052. The crown jewel of Superman's new metropolis is in ruins, and the increasingly violent Blue Earth movement is keeping the entire Super family on their toes. Meanwhile, Metallo's powerful new body is evolving in unforeseen horrific ways. As Metallo's life and sanity continue to unravel, he sets out to capture the only person who can help him, John Henry Irons. It's Steel versus Metallo as the new era of action comics continues. Like I said, y'all, I have been personally enjoying what they're doing with Superman in this whole new dawn of new DC era here. I like it. Let's get it. Rogue and Gambit, number one. Krakoa is on a precipice. Destiny alone can see what's coming, but the precog cannot act. For that, she'll need her adoptive daughter, Rogue. Husbands need not apply. But with mutant duties stealing Rogue away so much these days, Gambit is determined to make the most of the mission and put some cage on spice back into this increasingly complicated love affair. He just has to make it out of the bar first. Powerhouse writer Stephanie Phillips joins fan favorite artist Carlos Gomez for a thrill ride that'll lay bare some Krakoa's biggest secrets. Mmm. It's Rogan Gambit. I mean, it really didn't really matter what it was about. I am all in on this one. I Hate This Place, number six. So we got a new story arc starting up. Last year's breakout horror series returns. Trudy's past comes back to haunt her, which wouldn't be so bad if she and Gabby weren't already literally haunted by unimaginable forces of evil on a daily basis. Can a gal catch a break? Probably not. (laughs) And finally, we have I Am Iron Man, number one. Beneath the red and gold armor is a hopeless romantic a genius inventor, a war hero, a billionaire, an Avenger, a person, Tony Stark, dynamic duo Mariwa Oyadele and Dotson Akande unite again to journey through the rich history of Iron Man, telling stories never seen before that are set in iconic eras of old Shellhead. That's a turtle reference, but anyway... No better way to celebrate Iron Man's 60th anniversary than getting to watch him be the Earth's mightiest hero who we love so much. Kaiju battles under the sea, alien invasions in the desert, a rescue mission in outer space, all that and more to be expected in this new series, ideal for readers new to Iron Man 
and long-standing fans of the Golden Avenger. Please check that one out and many more this week at your local comic book store. Now, in Sourcewall news, Marvel's Ultimate Universe is returning. Wow. So after eight years, he killed Marvel's Universe in the page of Secret Wars. Writer Jonathan Hickman is revisiting that world with one of the artists who helped define it. Hickman is teaming with the Ultimate Iron, the Ultimate artist Brian Hitch, for a new four-issue series dubbed Ultimate Invasion. This series will center around two characters who survived the destruction of the Ultimate Universe and have made new homes in Marvel's core comic book universe: Miles Morales and the Maker, otherwise known as the Ultimate Universe's Reed Richards. While Hickman is keeping the story details under wraps, somehow this alliance will lead to a revival of the Ultimate Universe. Quote, I think it's fair to say that both Brian and I have already put in our time doing Ultimate books. So when Marvel laid this project in front of us, we both knew there needed to be a good reason to revisit the idea of Ultimate Comics beyond telling a cool story or just getting to work together which is something we've been trying to do for years. Hickman told Entertainment Weekly, so with that in mind, it couldn't be replicating or revisiting what Brian did in the original Ultimates, creating a streamlined, modernized version that would eventually become the spine of the MCU, and it certainly couldn't be what I did, which was a final chapter of a pre-existing universe. I like it. I like what they're doing. Not everyone's a fan of the Ultimate Comics, some stuff was kind of, <laughs> and some stuff was great, but it's Hickman, and I totally trust his vision. And he's not lying there. The Ultimate Comics, if y'all remember, a lot of this stuff became some of the foundational pinpoints of the MCU when it first kicked off. So this is, a, uh, I like where this is going. I'm all in on this one. All right, people, let's watch this. Watch this, y'all. Thunder. Thunder. The Lannister always pays his debts. Whoa, dude. I am the villain of the story. Okay, peeps, we have MCU's Thunderbolts landing an Oscar-nominated actor. Hmm. Steven Yin is making his Marvel debut in Thunderbolts. While the Oscar-nominated actor's part is being kept under wraps, Sources told Deadline that he will portray a significant role that could extend into future Marvel projects. In the comics, Thunderbolts focuses on a group of anti-heroes who are sent on missions by the government. Previously announced stars included Florence Pugh, Sebastian Stan, David Harbour, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Wyatt Russell, Hannah John Crowman, and Olga Kurlenko. The Bears' Oyo Dabiri is also joining the cast in an undisclosed role. So who do y'all think Steven might be? Now, there are some people who are saying that there are rumors that he might be the Sentry. Mm, I don't know. But I'm interested to see who he's playing, and I'm interested for the other bolts. Let's get it. And our final piece of Watch This News, HBO Max's It prequel series is being pushed forward. So it's officially moving forward with its prequel series, Welcome to Derry, a working title, and it was announced uh, previously this week. While we already knew the series was in development, HBO Max having committed to developing the entire first season, its formal series order means that the streamer is officially planning on moving forward. They also announced that Andy Muschietti, who directed both It and It Chapter 2, will return to direct multiple episodes of the series, including the premiere. Andy Muschietti developed Welcome to Derry for television alongside Barbara Muschietti, who produced the movies, and Wonder Woman co-writer Jason Fouche. Also announced last year, Fouche and Bar uh, Brad Caleb Kane will serve as showrunners. All right, so I guess we're going back to, to Derry. I'm not sure what this It series is going to be about. Probably the origins of Pennywise which is going to get really fucking dark. <laughs> but I'm here for it. I enjoyed the last two It movies. The first one scared the absolute bejesus out of me as a child, but I'm, a, I'm, 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 a, I'm not a boy no more. I'm a man, so I know what I'm watching. I'm, I'm good now. 
Just don't make it too scary, all right? <laughs> all right, y'all. Let's hop into Dumb Life. Peace, love, and video games! That's all my Donkey Kong! Yeah. That man is playing Galaga. All right, you gamers, Sony State of Play was this past week. Let's hop into it. So they kicked off the show with five new games coming to PSVR 2 sometime this year. The first game was the Fogland, a haunted first-person shooter, showing off combat against skeletons, spiders, and more. We also got a look at a VR survival game called Green Hell, which showed the player creating tents, bows, and other tools to survive in a harsh rainforest environment. Up next was a fast-paced first-person shooter with some telekinesis powers called Synapse. The game takes place in a black and white world with the only color seemingly coming from your character's powers. Then we saw a sci-fi stealth game based on the iconic Foundation series by Isaac Asimov. The game showed shooting and stealthing around a space station. The last game shown was Before Your Eyes, a colorful interactive adventure about memories where every time you blink, you jump forward in time. That would be horrible. Every time you blink, to have to keep your... I I just blinked five times saying what telling this story right now. (laughs) That's crazy. Um, Not a lot of people are too excited about the VR games, but I like them. I don't have the VR headset myself, but, you know, if somebody wants to, you know, gift your boy with one, I'll definitely play him and stream and Twitch stream him. Absolutely. Let's get it. So we got our biggest look yet at Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, which showed off the game's combat, RPG, and live service elements. We saw gameplay of Harley Quinn, King Shark, Captain Boomerang, and Deadshot as they romp around the metropolitan levels, destroying all enemies in sight. Rocksteady also talked about post-launch support, including a cosmic battle pass, gear score mechanics, and upgradable weapons. It's also rumored there may be more playable characters involved as well, too. So let's see what happens. Zangief, Lily, and Cammy have all been confirmed for Street Fighter VI. Each character got a brief gameplay showcase displaying their unique fighting styles. Cammy got the biggest makeover coming to Street Fighter 6 with a new hairstyle and jacket. Lily joins the cast as a newcomer to the series. And of course, we all know Zangief. Clutch my skull between thighs. Anyway, <laughs> we got a lengthy trailer for the upcoming Baldur Gate 3 along with a release date of August 31st. The trailer showed off various classes, shots of multiplayer, and combat. The game itself is set to release on PlayStation 5 and PC. We got another new look at Capcom's upcoming Resident Evil 4 remake, which confirmed the presence of Mercenaries mode, which is a classic feature in the original game. The trailer also gave us a first look at boss fight with Jack Krauser and Leon heading through the minecart section. We also learned a special demo of the game is on the way. And finally, Destiny's 2 latest expansion, Lightfall, is just a couple of days away from its launch on the 28th to get players ready bungie shared the launch trailer for the upcoming expansion the trailer highlighted the battle between the guardians and the witnesses and call of shadow legion of Cabal. we also got a new look of the upcoming strand subclass so what did you guys think what were you most excited for me i am still hyped as hell for street fighter 6 but not only is that fighting game coming out this year, but ladies and gentlemen, we got confirmed from Warner Bros. Discovery making the huge announcements during its earnings, its earnings call. A clip from that call had been passed around on Twitter, including a confirmation from Andrew Slabman, Warner Bros. Discovery Executive Vice President of the Global Investor Strategy, that Mortal Kombat 12 has been confirmed for this year. Quote, and there's lots more to come, including the highly anticipated Mortal Kombat 12, Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, games also set for release with an ambitious launch projection. 
So Mortal Kombat 12 will launch in the same year as Street Fighter 6 and potentially the same window as Tekken 8, making 2023-2024 an exciting time for fighting game fans. And as one of those fans, what a time to be alive, y'all. This is going to be so great. I can't wait. I'm definitely ready, ready to hand some L's out. So if you are listening to this podcast... When these games come out, Mortal Kombat 12 and Street Fighter 6, my gamer tag on PlayStation is Day One Nix. Come get the smoke. All right? When you're ready for that L, come find me. Don't worry. I will have the game. I will be ready. So, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you all for listening. Please, please be sure to listen to this podcast. Subscribe to this podcast. Let your boy know what you think about this podcast. Please check us out on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, and TikTok. Check out the YouTube channel. Like, share, subscribe there. As always, people, live to play, play to win, win to live. I speak geek. Do you speak geek?